with CM Punk talking about his plan for a WWE comeback and more. This is Wrestling Rambles. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we move on, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Rambles with notifications on and don't forget to like the video. Speaking about a potential promo battle between The Rock and Cody Rhodes, Bully Ray noted on Busted Open Radio, the way Cody defeats The Rock if The Rock becomes entirely too entertaining, and it's coming over the top of Cody. The last thing Cody should do is try to match The Rock on the mic. It's not happening. Rocky will absolutely destroy Cody on the mic. That's not because Cody's not good on the mic, it's just that it's The Rock and he's superior. Reacting to Bret Hart's comments on the Vince McMahon scandal, Dutch Mantel said this on Storytime. I always felt that even when I was close to him and talking to him in his office, which didn't happen a lot, but whenever I was sitting there and you know he was, he was, I just felt a weird feeling. I didn't know what it was. I just know that I felt really, really uncomfortable. Now I can see that my alert system, my antenna was telling me, hey, this guy's a little bit of a different cat. Going over an interview regarding a former WWE star who accused the company of covering up her rape during a Tribute to the Troops tour, News Nation wrote, Cara Papia, friend of Ashley Massaro, a former WWE star who accused Vince McMahon of covering up an alleged joined Banfield to discuss the allegations made. Ashley Massaro's daughter replied to this post writing, Cara Papia wasn't even a friend of my mother's when she passed. She was an ex-best friend who, since her passing, has just spam messaged me, unsettling and delirious messages and has fabricated bizarre messages, etc, etc. Another post by Female Locker Room reads, Ashley Massaro's best friend tells News Nation that Stephanie McMahon specifically knew all about what happened to Ashley and was not genuinely compassionate. She walked into the boardroom, she was threatened there was no compassion, no sympathy, nothing. Massaro's daughter then said, Finally gained the courage to search my mom's name and I see her ex-best friend, the woman who has harassed me and my grandma since her passing, has messaged family members awfully mean things pretending to be me, etc. as the voice chosen to represent this. God help me. No one who supports the Massaro family, literally all that's remaining is me and my grandma, Barbara, who I live with anyways, would go to the media or news outlets. They know it's against our wishes, her mother's wishes. Her mother as in Ashley's mother, my grandmother. Revealing his plan for a return to WWE following his tricep surgery, CM Punk said this to ESPN. I'm only about two weeks post-op. It's been more mental than anything. Pain is whatever, you know? Like, we all deal with it. I'm just more heartbroken. Was kind of on a roll. Was looking forward to a lot of cool opportunities coming up and for that to get paused while I had just returned to the WWE sucks. But I know those same opportunities will be there and it's just life. It's an occupational hazard. You get knocked down, you get back up. Wash, rinse, repeat. Speaking about his current physique after his surgery, Randy Orton told Sports Illustrated, I had the surgery, things were going well, and I changed my diet and I started packing on a few pounds. About six months post-surgery, I was able to do things in the gym that I hadn't been able to do my entire 30s. I was able to start working on my glutes and my hamstrings and my lower back, and I had no pain. Man, I went from 240 pounds to 280. I'm 275 right now, and I feel fantastic. I feel like I was meant to be this weight my whole life, but my frame wasn't able to sustain it until this fusion. During that same interview, Randy Orton was asked about his involvement in the upcoming Elimination Chamber match as he said, I'd love to win on Saturday and then win that championship another time. I'd love to wrestle John Cena at WrestleMania, but those aren't my biggest goals. My goal is to never take one second of this for granted. That's my number one priority.
also randy orton recalled his return at survivor series last year saying to sports illustrated i was supposed to be a surprise in war games at survivor series all these CM Punk rumors started a month prior, and everyone thought since we were in Chicago for Survivor Series that CM Punk would be the surprise. So they had Cody a week before War Games say that he had a friend, me, that was going to come. The surprise was spoiled all because Punk was rumored to be there and WWE didn't want people to be pissed. The day of Survivor Series, I'm about to get my boots on, I'm feeling the nerves. It had been a year and a half. Triple H is like, hey Randy, I've got to talk to you for a second. I'm like, yeah, what's up man? So he told me a couple things. And then he went, one more thing, Punk's returning tonight. I thought he was messing with me. I said, you're joking. And he was like, no, I'm not. This is something that just happened in the last few days, yada, yada, yada. Taking to TikTok, Drew McIntyre responded to being called a hypocrite for taking the Bloodline's help to defeat Cody Rhodes on Raw. Or at the time, just after 7 p.m., where Perth, Western Australia, only took about 30 hours of flying to get here. We left right after Raw, right after defeating Cody Rhodes, and of course, heading right to the gym. I was the only one trusted by WWE to do media after literally stepping off the plane while the others rest, which I've got no issues with. I've worked hard to be trusted when it counts. But as a result of these factors, I really haven't had a chance to properly reflect in the past 48 hours, but I'll give it a go if people will stop asking for a picture every two seconds. I've also read what some people have been saying online. I've heard what Colin McAfee had to say, let's make this clear. I am not happy. Don't be pushing a false narrative to the masses when you have such power to influence that coming to the source and understanding the big picture. Watch Monday back. Look in my eyes. What do you see? You clearly see I wanted to attack solo. The time is right, I will. But I've grown as a person, a competitor, a leader. I can't be selfish. I have to do what's right for the fans and the future of the world title, even if it causes me physical and mental pain. I know that a win over Cody sends me to Australia with even more momentum, only the second person to pin him in two years, not to mention I've got Ellie Knight on SmackDown before Elimination Chamber on Saturday, an appropriate week for the true workhorse. Seth was the easy road to fill. I'm taking the hard road, as I've always done in my career, and I'm leaving no doubt in anyone's mind that I am the real deal and I do not deserve my moment. I've earned it. Discussing his face-off against Braun Breaker in the Royal Rumble, WWE Intercontinental Champion Gunter told the Battleground Podcast, I mean, good on him, I would have done the same. First of all, it was his big first appearance on the main roster, and as he should, he made the most of it. He went in there with all this energy and all the power he has, and I think just athletically, he's somebody that's superior over a lot of the guys on the main roster. But that was the Royal Rumble. He was in there for a few minutes. It's gonna show if he can uphold it in a one-on-one -on -one situation. If I would face him at WrestleMania, I would be confident because my advantage towards him is an almost 20-year career, and he's still very young and inexperienced at that. I think he has all the potential in the world. If he's the one for WrestleMania, I'm here to take on the challenge, and I think it's gonna be a very exciting match. about the potential for former WWE head of creative Brian Gewurz to replace Triple H as the chief content officer of WWE, former WCW president Eric Bischoff noted on his 83 Weeks podcast, hey, who's currently running creative? That's Hunter, but if it's Brian, I don't think that's a bad thing. I'm not anti-Hunter. I think what he's done is fantastic. I don't want to see Hunter squeezed out. I want to be clear about that, but Brian, man, my goodness, the idea that he's back is nothing other than a positive.
Touching on the possibility of winning the world title in All Elite Wrestling, Rob Van Dam said on his One of a Kind podcast, so if I go after the AEW Championship, say I collect that gold and add that and become the only wrestler to have held the WWE, TNA, ECW, and AEW Championship. I mean, I do sh like that. I'm always finding new ways to stand out and be one of a kind. Imagine if that happened, how inspired people would be in general to think they grew up watching me decades ago. And then here at 53, they're seeing me, prospectively, maybe having the best matches or the best year of my career. Going over the injury that Jeff Hardy sustained during his match against Sammy Guevara, RVD said this about it on that same podcast. That's why they call it a high-risk move. I'm not throwing shade on anybody because accidents happen. God knows I've potatoed people in my matches, but that's on Sammy completely. That's a high-risk move, Van Dam said before adding, when you F it up, it's on you. Going over travel problems for an AEW star, Ringside News wrote that Ring of Honor's Kyle Fletcher is currently facing visa issues that have prevented him from working in the United States. This situation has affected his ability to perform for both AEW and ROH. Fletcher, who holds the Ring of Honor World Television Championship, has been absent from action since his last appearance on January 31st where he faced Chris Jericho on AEW Dynamite. Despite his visa issues, sources indicated to Fightful Select that AEW has been pleased with Fletcher's performances. However, his longtime tag team partner, Mark Davis, has been sidelined with an injury. Prior to his visa-related hiatus, Fletcher was set to engage in a program for the ROH World Television Championship against Ethan Page. Unfortunately, these plans have been put on hold due to his current situation. A recent post from WWE 2K showed off Liv Morgan's entrance where she is referred to as the Queen of Extreme. As this led to former ECW star Francine responding on X, writing, I have the Queen of Extreme trademarked. Do you need something sent to you guys again from my lawyer? Addressing the Vince McMahon scandal, John Cena had this to say about it on the Howard Stern Show. I don't think it's complicated to talk about. It's complicated to listen to. That's why I don't necessarily put a lot of time and equity into it. There's still a long way to go. I can say this. I'm a big advocate of love and friendship and honesty and communication in the same breath. I'm also a big advocate of accountability. If someone's behavior lies so far outside of your value system that the balance shifts of I can't operate in a world where this works, that's the end result of being accountable. Right now, I'm going to love the person I love. Be their friend. I love you. You have a hill to climb. There is the saying of you don't know who your friends are until sh hits the fan or your back is against the wall. That doesn't make any of what's going on any easier to swallow. Just telling someone you love them, it's a hill to climb and we'll see what happens. That's that. It sounds so cliche, but it has to be one day at a time. I've openly said I love the guy, I have a great relationship with the guy, and that's that. It's largely my construct of operating with honesty and communication. Those are strong leads to handling any problem or achievement. The whole thing is super unfortunate and it sucks. It deals with an individual I love and an entity I love. I want everyone to have the experience that I have. Not only do I tell a friend that I love them, but I switch to the entity and say, how can I help? Following the recent departure of a WWE writer, it seems All Elite Wrestling has hired her, with Soap Opera Network writing that, adding Jennifer Peppermint's brilliant mind to the AEW team opens the door for exciting new ideas and will help us build upon the incredible stories currently developing on the road to AEW Revolution, across our three weekly shows on TBS and TNT, and the effects of Jennifer's arrival in AEW will be felt for many years in the future, said AEW President Tony Khan in a statement. We're thrilled to welcome her today and I look forward to her creativity and collaboration with our team across the board in what will be AEW's biggest year yet and beyond.
with Shotzi recently suffering a knee injury during a recent taping for NXT. Booker T said this about it on his Hall of Fame podcast. I heard it was really a hard one and a tough one too, and she was in a lot of pain. Hopefully she can chop it up and get back because she has become such a cool character. Love her. It's such a player, you know? It's just her just to feel that comes out of her when she's doing a promo. She's so confident. And you know, being around her for a long time, got a chance to work with her and tough enough. So see her in this position and then boom, go down like that. Just hard, man. Just hard. You know, just talking about this just three weeks back and forth. A lot of ladies going down and getting hurt and knee injuries, whatnot, whatnot then. But it's just the cost of being in the business. Going over the live attendance figures for AEW and WWE last week, Ringside News wrote that WrestleTix has compiled last week's attendance figures for WWE and AEW TV shows. Friday Night SmackDown recorded the highest ticket sales, while AEW Dynamite had the lowest. Monday Night Raw on February 12th took place at the Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky, where they sold 10,108 tickets. The February 14th AEW Dynamite was held at the HEB Center in Cedar Park, Texas, and secured an audience of 3,000 246. The February 16th Friday Night Smackdown took place at the Delta Center in Salt Lake City, Utah and sold 11,233 tickets, making it the biggest winner last week. There was no episode of AEW Collision last week, so Dynamite ended up being the biggest loser. Asked about his aspirations to compete in the UFC, Montez foretold TNT Sports, 100% I will say I've always been a fan of it, always been training for it. It is something I was talking about in the last two years about actually going over and having a match, seeing CM Punk, Brock Lesnar, and Bobby Lashley doing different promotions. Something I had interest in, but it got shut down quickly by, um, coughs. Revealing the sacrifices he has made to make his WWE career happen, Intercontinental Champion Gunter said this to GV Wire. We fly over and then arrive, go to the gym, go to the venue, do my match, and then get in the car again. And then we're actually going to drive to Fresno and stay in a hotel there, and then wake up in the morning and repeat. That's basically what it is. It's a very tight schedule, but it's the life of a wrestler, and that's what I always wanted to do. That is the downside, and it's just the price to pay a little bit, but it's also the things like my wife, Jenny, she used to wrestle before, so she knows the business. And I got a great backup there. And it's always hard leaving a little one behind because I don't want to miss anything. But on the other hand, I'm out there providing a great life for my family and to sacrifice that you do now and then. The idea is that later on, you can live a life that nobody is able to live after you put the work in. During that same interview, Gunter said this about a potential matchup against Brock Lesnar. I always was vocal about my dream match in the past, but that fell through now. I don't know if we'll see Brock again if that's ever going to happen, but I'm wide open when it comes to that as of now. For more information regarding the sex trafficking lawsuit filed by former WWE employee Janelle Grant against the company Vince McMahon and John Laurinaitis, Ringside News wrote that, According to Sean Ross Sapp's report on Fightful Select, there is significant chatter surrounding the lawsuit, particularly within WWE circles. One notable aspect that remains shrouded in mystery is the identity of the other executives mentioned by Grant in her legal proceedings. Speculation abounds regarding these unnamed executives with their identities remaining elusive to many within the company. However, credible sources within WWE have suggested that one of these individuals may have parted ways with the company some time ago. John Laurinaitis, represented by his attorney, has begun to make his stance known, a move anticipated by industry insiders. Long regarded as McMahon's fall guy by some veteran WWE employees, Laurinaitis was believed to have certain financial safeguards in place since the summer of 2022. However, the potential escalation to formal charges makes a significant shift in the situation, according to many within WWE. One source commented, I'm sure he thinks he's doing himself favor 
favors by saying management knew and proper WWE protocols were followed, but too many things happened there under his watch. Recent media attention surrounding the late Ashley Massaro was reignited following a Vice article. According to reports, Fightful had arranged an interview with Massaro in March 2019 for StarCast 2 in Las Vegas that May. She had intended to discuss her plans to return to in-ring training and consider further addressing her allegations of during a WWE tribute to the Troops tour. Tragically, Massaro passed away just two weeks before StarCast. WWE talent have reportedly not been instructed to avoid discussing the lawsuit in public appearances or interviews, with several being questioned about it. While other wrestling promotions are not actively involved in the investigations, talent from various US-based companies have been given the freedom to address the issue or participate in investigations at their discretion. A former talent, speaking on condition of anonymity revealed they are contemplating whether to share their experiences through the media or pursue legal action. And this was your pro wrestling news update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all later.